Before you watch this, watch the lab first, then this tutorial will be far easier to follow. Also make sure you plotted out the two curves of voltage against time, charging and discharging. Uh, this is the analytics of charge on capacitor. So we're going to do the analytics now, having, having just done the lab. So um, the lab has just shown us that the current and voltage in such a circuit changes during the whole time the capacitor is charging. What is happening is as follows. Upon switching on the cap is initially uncharged we get an initial current of I equals VI over R and no voltage can be measured across the cap but over time a voltage will build up between the plates as charge is moved onto them this voltage will oppose the source voltage more and more as time goes by so initially we have high, high current or charge flow rate and zero voltage and near the end we have zero current and maximum voltage across the capacitor which will equal the supply voltage so this simple circuit is more complex than it may initially seem, but although as yet we have not described an uh, analytical way to time this charging and discharging periods, we now at, ne at least know what exactly is physically happening and why. Let's see what analysis has to say about this RC circuit. Firstly, we know that the amount of charge on a capacitor is equal to its capacitance times the voltage that exists between its plates. We write Q equals CV. Now we have just seen in the lab that when charge is moving as a current, coulombs per second, it affects the voltage. When charge flow is high upon switching on, we saw that the voltage changed in direct response to the speed of the charge flow. Voltage changes faster across the capacitor when current is high and it changes slowly when the current is low. So we can say this in a shorter way like so. Rate of charge flow is proportional to the rate of voltage change across the capacitor. We can write that as an equation like so. I equals C dV by dt, where C is the proportionality, which is the capacitance. dV dt is like saying a change in V over a change in T, volts per second. Those of you who know calculus will have no problem with this notation. Those that don't, it does not really matter, as the results we will soon get does not require calculus knowledge anyway. So don't worry if you don't understand or you're unfamiliar with this notation. So when we think about this equation, we say in our heads, the charge flow rate, this, the charge flow rate, into a capacitor will be equal to some multiple capacitance value of the rate that the voltage changes, this rate of voltage change. So now we not only know what the physical behavior of this circuit component is, we now have an equation that describes the value of the current that goes through it. In our lab, the circuit involved a voltage source, VI, with a switch to bring it into the circuit. At T equals zero, switch is moved to position A. So this is moved to position A at, at the beginning. The equation which then describes our lab setup is given as C dV by dt equals VI minus VC over R. The current entering the node is same as the current leaving. So the current entering is the same as the current leaving, uh, where VC is the initial voltage on the capacitor. So here we've got the voltage, the input voltage minus the capacitance voltage over the resistance. That gives you the current going in and then of course you've got the current which is defined as C dV by dt. That's down there so the current coming in this way equals the current going in therefore we've got this equation. Now that's a differential equation the solution to that is this Vc equals Vi brackets 1 minus e to the exponential t over Rc and that's the equation for a charging capacitor for this circuit Right, that was the solution of a differential equation. If you're, if you're interested in how we got to that last step, then you'll need to study how to solve differential equations. But you don't need to for analysing circuits, as it's the solutions to such equations is all that we ever use anyway. So I've just gone straight to here without bothering to go through all the rigmarole of having to show you how a differential equation is solved. This is the, this is the point we get to here. So VC is the voltage across the capacitor in this RC circuit. So that's what that's representing. Let yourself get a feel for this equation by picking some values of R and C and the voltage value into, say, a graphics calculator or a computer to plot some curves using it, yeah? So just plot some out and you'll get a feel for what's going on. Now, after having charged the capacitor, 
to some voltage VC, we now switch to position B. So we now take this down to position B. So this end up with this circuit now without the, the voltage. This allows capacitor to discharge. So the charge is move from C to ground. So they're going here to ground. We can redraw equivalent circuit like so. So this is the equivalent circuit. It now has no source voltage, VI. And so the different equation we end up with is, is a lot simpler one. It's C dV by dt equals minus VCOR. Now, if you solve that differential equation, which again, there's no need to, you end up with this solution here. VC equals V0 e to the minus t over RC. So this equation is used for the discharge of the capacitor. Again, plug some values into to get a feel for it and compare the curve to our lab curve. You'll see how close they are. Uh, so that's it basically. Uh, you've now covered the, the equation for charging a capacitor in an RC circuit and the equation for discharging the capacitor in an RC circuit. So on the next tutorial I'm going to describe an equation which incorporates both these and is really the one to remember and uh, it'll give you a bit more insight into what's going on here. So thanks very much.